myself. Um, uh, my name is Alma, Alma Rosa Martinez Carranza. I am uh, Dr. Alma Martinez. I'm a university professor. My area of, of interest, specialization, passion has always been theater, acting, performance, directing, the arts, uh, and film and television later on. Um, I was born in Monclova, Coahuila. My parents immigrated when... I wish more would have seen that growing up. So I'm just really excited to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm Renee Rodriguez Bedincourt. Uh, I am the judge of the 449th District Court. I'm a district court judge here in uh, Hidalgo County. Uh, my name is Brenda Chavez. I am a first generation Chicana. Um, my parents uh, came here in the 60s. So I have two older siblings that were um, born here in LA. And um, the, I, um, what else can I tell you? I am a, I'm a, currently an attorney and um, I have my own practice. I'm 10 years into my own practice. I'm an entertainment and business attorney. My name is Gustavo Perez. I am happy to say I've worked in education, edu education technology space for 20 years. Uh Absolutely. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you for having me here. I'm Mayra Morales. I am a female Latinx um, individual with, actually my parents are, are immigrants, so I'm first generation. Hey Jay, um, yes, uh, my name is Alvaro Arce and I'm, um, I'm a lawyer um, on the digital music team um, at Meta, formerly known as Facebook. Um, and I've been doing digital music licensing for about, um, I guess, 10 years now. Um, I am Nancy Villarreal. I never changed my last name and that'll, that'll take us on, a, on our own journey uh, ourselves. But uh, uh, if my husband was in this podcast, he'd say, uh, you need to mention Garza. Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Olivia Barron. Um, I'm a Rio Grande Valley, South Texas native who went to college and medical school in Houston, just graduated medical school last year, and now I'm a physician in an orthopedic surgery training program in Houston. So I will be an orthopedic surgeon, fully accredited in about five years. Tell us, I always tell my guests, to take us back, take us back wherever they want to start. Um, typically, we'll go back and listen, and they'll share their educational journey. Yeah. If you had to go back, where did it all start for you? Dude, I'm, I'm already going to get emotional. <laughs> um, uh, it's crazy how you get, how you get triggered. <laughs> And take your time, take your time, brother. And maybe, maybe it's a COVID time, right? Everyone's a little more emotional. <laughs> um, so my, my, um, my mom crossed the border uh -huh, as a single mom. I can't believe right away, dude, <laughs> you got me. Like, um, it's probably just all this pent up, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So my mom uh, was pregnant with me when she crossed. Um, and, uh, you know, my, her older brother was already in the U.S. in L.A. So, you know, landed in like South Central L.A., right? And, you know, I mean, look, a lot of us, um, especially Latinos and, you know, folks that uh, come from immigrant backgrounds, like we have similar stories, right? My, mine is similar to a lot of folks that come from that. But um, the reason it's triggering is because you're now in these like elite worlds. And <laughs> in, in those worlds, you're like, you're the only one, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean, that, that's how it started. My, you know, I, 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 go to, I go to that because... If she wouldn't have done that, um, I would absolutely would not have any of these opportunities, right? And let's start in the great fields of Fresno, California, the Central Valley, the agricultural epicenter, where a question from my mama helped change my life. We were picking grapes, 
And if, if uh, you've ever picked grapes, you know, it's a taxing process um, to help lay them down to become raisins. My dad, my mom and I, and I was the oldest of five, we go out in those hot summers uh, to pick grapes, 16 cents a tray, 16 cents a tray uh, to try to make ends meet. And she asked me this question one day, mijo, do you want to pick grapes for the rest of your life or get an education? I think emphasis on education started very young for me. I loved school. I loved being in that social environment. I loved the challenge of learning new things and mastering new things. Um, and I loved reading. And I had parents who were very supportive in that and let me join all the clubs at school and let me stay late to do activities at school and, and, and encourage that, which I think was crucial to me, um, finding my way in education. But my parents also always put the expectation on me that I would go to college and that education was my key to success in the future. So I was, and I don't remember what grade I was, but it was a summer and, um, that I remember saying and telling uh, my parents something very dramatic about, you know, that either we don't have enough money or life is just so much is so easy for you. Something around that, that entity. That's what I remember. And my mom says, oh, and it's okay if I kind of translate into Spanish. You know, yeah. uh, no sabes de lo que estás hablando. Mañana te voy a dar un ejemplo de lo que es trabajo. Right. So I'm going, well, it was summer. And so we were so used to being latchkey kids. And so because our parents never wanted to in the protection and the journey that they had to come to Mex to the United States. They protected us a lot from a lot of things. Right. And so tú te quedas en la casa, ustedes no le hablan a nadie, et cetera, et cetera. And so what happened there was um, we got up early in the morning. First of all, I was like, why are you waking me up so early? What's going on? What happened? Oh, you didn't forget we had that argument. So it must have been, I guess, old enough, fourth or fifth grade in the summer of that. And then they took me to La Labor to pick up cucumber. I remember that. And so we literally got up at four in the morning and, um, and they took me and, and I said, what in the world am I doing here, right? And so it was labor. And I remember these trucks that we would just pick up cucumber and I would need to do it fast, but I'm hungry. What well, does it matter? You need to go on, right? And so be able to then put them up in the, in the trucks. And so I guess I was real flaky tita in, in that time. So I think I, I looked sweaty and red. And so the gentleman from the truck uh, was the one that picked me up and said, no, no, they can que se quede aquí un ratito, parece que se va a desmayar. <laughs> so she looks like if she's about to pass out. So I sat with him and then he was the one that said, it doesn't look like if you were made for this. And I told him, and I kind of think I did through my dehydration, I was like, no, I know I wasn't. And so he says, if you don't go to school and you don't finish school, and their own perception of what school is. Aquí vas a venir todos los días. You're going to come here every day and you're going to do this day in, day out. You know, I, I've thought about this, you know, a lot because, you know, I, I grew up in East Palo Alto, which you're very familiar with, 10 minutes away from Stanford, yet worlds away. And, you know, the expectation was that I would go to a community college. That I really didn't know anything beyond that. And I was very fortunate in eighth grade that I had a teacher by the name of Barry Applebaum, who I still, you know, speak to right now. And he was a Stanford grad that actually decided to teach in Ravenswood Elementary. The school doesn't exist anymore, flood. And he was my eighth grade teacher. And he took a liking to me just because of the fact that I was one of the few kids that, you know, didn't throw something at him, uh, quite <laughs> honestly. I was just, I was a good kid, man. I was a good kid in school because, you know, otherwise my dad would have would have whooped my butt. That was his expectation. Um, was that, you know, I'd always come home with straight A's. So I, you know, I was very much, you know, by the book and, you know, and respected my teachers. And uh, he took a real liking to me. And towards the end of my eighth grade year, I was selected as a valedictorian. And I was asked to write a speech keeping Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech in mind. And it was the first time I'd actually ever read it, despite having, you know, grown up in East Palo Alto. And, you know, 
I really struggle to connect to its academic concepts. You know, mm. the, the words are so profound when you actually start digging into them, you can't take them at face value. And Mr. Applebaum kind of spent some time with me, you know, refining what my speech would look like, helping me understand that speech. And, you know, at the end of it, you know, I gave him something that I was actually pretty proud of. He looked at it and he said, Gustavo, I know you're capable of more than this. I, I know that, you know, you mentioned that, you know, that, that you would love to go to Stanford like I did. He's like, I'll tell you right now, you have the potential, but this is not your best work. Sent me back to redo it. And it was the first time anybody won had called me out on the fact that I could do better and done so from a place of, I know you can achieve more. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and not only that, but framed it within the concept, you know, con context of, you know, you mentioned you want to go to Stanford, you know, where I went, that's the only school we, I'd ever heard of. Um, and it was the first time I really kind of said like, maybe this is a possibility for me. I think my educational moment happened when um, for some reason, and I'm still waiting for them to call me back and say, we're just kidding, we made a mistake, was when I entered the University of Texas Law School. I mean, I, I come, I'm the only girl, there was double standards in my home. I have two older brothers. They were allowed to do anything and everything because they were boys. Um, when it came to me, I wasn't allowed. So one of those things was going away to college. Um, it wasn't so much that I wasn't allowed, I just wasn't given the choice. When kids were, you know, parents were hurrying them up to do college applications, I was, you know, secretly filling out a college application because my mother and my father said, look, there's a perfectly good university in our backyard. You do not need to leave. If you do leave, you're on your own. We can't afford to pay your room and board, you know. So basically, I didn't have a choice. Um, and I remember, you know, even getting scared that my mom was going to find a an admission letter in the mail when most kids were waiting for the, you know, it, it's, it's really funny, but, you know, um, but really my educational background, my educational journey started when I went into UT law, because Jay, you have to understand, I was going to school with people from Harvard, Yale, Stanford, um, you know, Ivy league schools, um, even UT, a &M, these were the cream of the crop kids. And for me to be there, there was only 50 of us, Hispanics in our graduating class. I was a female. I was really Hispanic. I mean, the Anglo late girls would ask me where I tanned. Uh, that's what they would ask me. Um, you know, I, and, and also you see, so there was a lot of injustices, but it was just, I say it started there because it was a life journey that started, you know, in UT, the famous slogan is what starts here changes the world. Honestly, what started there changed my world. And so I have to tell you, education has always been my, I've always liked it very much. It's been my retreat. It's been my, um, how can I say, my, my safety place. Mm -hmm. I always really liked school. Because remember, I was raised by a Mexican family and, and I was a, a girl, I was a woman. So I couldn't go to the dances. I couldn't go to the, my, even my senior like retreat, I couldn't go. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do a lot of things, but I could go to school. Uh how, what last piece of advice do you want to give our listeners before you go? Um, I almost want to say that I want to speak to that little girl of me as, as, as a, a point of advice for others, because I shared with you that my home environment wasn't, um, wasn't a, a good one. It wasn't a healthy one. And, and so for any students, you know, I know I'm not the only one, you know, that have suffered traumas or don't come from healthy home environments is that that you can, you know, I, I, some of the things that I, that I experienced, you know, I can honestly tell you are things that um, definitely could have led me down the path of even suicide, drug addiction, you know, prostitution, and I don't say that lightly. Um, and instead, I had this fire in me that just, you know, where, and then school, you know, school was that escape for me, like I said, and so, if anything, I want to say to anybody that is suffering depression or has had a tough home life or has suffered anything like that. Um, know that there, there, I guess, I, I know it sounds cheesy, but I would say there is a light at the end of the tunnel, you know. It's about capturing it, being vigilant of what, and, and be vigilant because there's always going to be somebody that's going to give you the opportunity. You just need to grasp it. Don't be afraid of it. So, you know, I encourage them to, 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 to remain in there and provide that support uh, as best they can. And, and where there are challenging circumstances for families, um, 
you know that uh, it's the entire family, you know, that can provide support. I know um, that, that, that those words from tias, tios, abuelitos, cousins, everybody, it makes a difference. So I would just encourage that. But labels can be harmful. So the one thing that I learned is do not let them label you. Um, explore everything. That crack, I want to open it wider uh, to let more people in. Um, more people that otherwise wouldn't have a chance in all these places. Every single company I'm with, every single place I'm at, I want to open that door wider and let more people in. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think that's a great way to, to end the podcast today. Thanks, brother.